In this Wrestle Talk news, wrestlers backstage were upset with MJF, plus loads more updates on that situation, an AEW star has been arrested, Luke's review of Raw, and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk! The talk of the wrestling world going into and coming out of Double or Nothing is MJF, who had an awful lot of controversy surrounding him. For a brief roundup, he no showed a meet and greet, reportedly had a flight booked out of Las Vegas, which would have seen him miss Double or Nothing, but ended up staying and working his match as planned, though he was stretching out of that match, seemingly writing him off AEW TV for a while. Now there are lots more details surrounding the situation that have emerged. PW Insider is reporting exactly what happened this past weekend, noting that MJF only arrived in the arena while the buy-in was on the air, and it was done so quietly and quickly that most of the locker room didn't even know he was there. When his music hit for his match, he reportedly was not in the gorilla position. Gorilla position being immediately behind the curtain where they make their entrances, for those unaware. Not some weird sex position. The report goes on, saying, he left the building immediately after being stretched out of the arena and did not remain for the rest of the show. He was seen exiting the venue with AEW producer Pat Buck. The belief is that there was some sort of agreement made between MJF and Tony Khan to get through Double or Nothing, though the larger frustrations have not been resolved yet. This whole saga was seemingly not exactly taken well by some people backstage in AEW though, as the report also notes that there were some talents upset with him over the situation. But it seems there may be some light at the end of the dark MJF tunnel for those who want to see him stay in AEW, as the report also says that MJF and Tony Khan are more likely now to sit down and work this stuff out than before. And more than that, Fightful Select is reporting that a sit down meeting was actually scheduled to take place between the two at 8pm. EST yesterday. But to add some confusion fuel to the work or shoot fire, Select also reports that we've not determined whether this aspect is real or a work, and when we asked, no follow-up answer was provided, which was a first throughout this situation. Sean Rossap also tweeted that he spoke with MJF directly, who said he had a lot to think about. I have no idea what's going on anymore. This entire situation is a complete mess, with tangled webs of work and shoot and disagreement and contracts and meetings and flights that were booked but weren't boarded, and I have no idea when we'll gain any clarity on it. But for the latest as it develops, stay tuned to WrestleTalk.com. The last time we saw Jake Atlas, he faced Adam Cole on AEW TV, unfortunately tearing his ACL during the match, and he's been off our screen since while he recovers. Last week, however, Atlas was arrested and charged with misdemeanor battery, domestic assault. The police report from the incident noted how Atlas was intoxicated and became physically aggressive towards his partner, after he was showing more attention to their friend than Atlas. He was also physically aggressive a second time in another attempted attack on the victim, who was left with scratches and a torn tank top. Atlas was released from jail on May 23rd and has a court date in Orange County on June 28th. We'll keep you updated as this develops on WrestleTalk.com too. Before we get on with the rest of the episode, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor, Tennis Clash, a free mobile PvP game with super high-end graphics and a pure fun playing experience. Available on both Android and iOS. Download it now using my links in the description box below, or you'll get 200 gems and 500 gold to start the game strong. Tennis Clash has become a massive worldwide hit, with more than 60 million players across the globe. Just look at that 4.7 rating on the App Store. Dave Meltzer would be proud. And the game is getting better all the time, like this year's collaboration with the Roland Garros Tournament, aka the French Open, where they've created an amazing in-game version. I've been, uh, been practicing my forearm a lot for this. Watch me be great at this game. I'm on tour, I'm a New York rookie. I am facing someone called Tafui. Okay, okay, here we go. And... Oh, oh my god, what a shot! <laughs> Oh, I tried to be technical there. Oh, what a volley. Oh, but he's brought it back. You're not coming back from that, though. Mmm, the forearm power. Is that in? What a freaking service. 
I'm glad that this is being recorded. What I love about the game is how I can hone my character in on one ability. Forehand, backhand, or agility. It's the tennis equivalent of create a wrestler. Do you want them to be high flying, technical, or submission? So download Tennis Clash now for free using the links in the video description below, and you'll get 200 gems and 500 gold for supporting my channel. Give it a go and tell me about the game in the comments, or I'll reply that how much better I am than you are. I will end you. Please do at least check the game out as it really helps support this channel. Ace that ace. And now it's time for my review of Monday Night Raw, the go home edition before Hell in a Cell this Sunday. And yes, I also forgot it was Hell in a Cell this Sunday in about five minutes. This show opened with Becky Lynch cutting a typically fabulous promo with such brilliant lines as I run on spite and coffee, which is the same as Adam Blompier. She also pointed out that the only reason Asuka was champion in 2020 is because Lynch gave her the belt while she was off creating life like the god that she is. A line that was booed by the crowd. Are you booing childbirth? Asuka came out and was awesome, as did Bianca Belair, so they could all stand in a row. This led to Asuka versus Belair, which was a very good match that saw the champion win. And afterwards, Becky laid out both women to stand tall. Simple and effective build for this Sunday's match, apart from pinning the number one contender to the Raw Women's Championship twice in two weeks. Still, wins and losses don't matter, I guess. Remember that, children. In the industry, we call that foreshadowing. Ezekiel teamed with the Mysterions next to take on Kevin Owens and Alpha Academy, which was fun enough, but I've seen Ezekiel pin Chad Gable twice in the last two weeks, and he did it again here to make it three and three. But up next was easily the best thing on the show, and what probably should have been the main event angle. Cody Rhodes came out to cut the same promo he's cut since he returned, but this time it was Seth Rollins that added some spice to this quite bland feud. And that's because Seth, pew pew, did some shoot type stuff in his promo. He said that Cody left six years ago. He was fired, but let's ignore that. And he spent that time with his friends trying to tear down the house that Rollins was building. A direct reference to all elite wrestling, which I think is the first time that's been really addressed. Better yet, he had the line, you don't get to take a sledgehammer to the throne, then come back to sit on it a reference to that entrance from Double or Nothing 2019, and one that brilliantly highlights some of the hypocrisy of Cody Rhodes since his return to WWE. The two then had an awesome brawl, with a rare Michael McGillicuddy spotting to loud thunderous, this is awesome chants from the crowd. And yeah, it was awesome. As I said, easily the best thing on this show, and it was really needed to build some interest into the third encounter between these two in as many months. The references were also nice and subtle. Brilliant if you understand what he's referring to, but not so inside baseball that it cuts off the casual fans who've never even heard of an AEW. This was great. Too bad it wasn't the main event of the show. Alexa Bliss continued her directionless run by pinning Dewdrop in a couple of minutes. Totally buries Dewdrop and her story with Nikki A.S.H. because Dewdrop's whole point is that she should listen to her in order to start winning again. They did show a recap of Money in the Bank from 2018 which Bliss won, so I guess this is all being done to set her up as this year's winner. Apart from that, big old shrug. Speaking of shrugging, and Miz had a Miz TV segment with the Street Profits that quickly became a 24-7 segment where Tamina won the belt then Tazawa pinned her afterwards. It was a total waste of time, and it lasted a long amount of it. Also T-Bar was there. Mustafa Ali then had a match with an entranceless Champa. Quite impressive to make Tommaso Champa this irrelevant this early in his main roster run. Where the gimmick was that if Ali won, he would get a US title match against Austin Theory. So of course Theory caused a DQ and Ali won. Now you may think that's a bit silly, but Theory then announced they would have that match right now, which was a really nice touch as Theory quickly beat the beaten down Ali, who put in a wonderful performance selling that plight. But then, oddly, Adam Pearce came out and said that Vince McMahon has decided that Ali should have a fair fight and there'll be a rematch this Sunday. Why? I've no idea. And like Simon Miller, it also raises a few more whys. Why did Ali get another championship contenders match when he lost his last one to fear? Why did Adam Pearce make this announcement instead of Vince McMahon? And perhaps more importantly, why did Austin Theory not look bothered about this announcement in the slightest? Surely the whole point of this angle was to show that Theory is running scared of Ali, so took a cheap way out in defending his title. Now he has to do it in a fair fight, and instead of freaking out about that like the heel that he is, he's just like, eh. 
and in the show's main event, the Usos took on Matt Riddle and Shinsuke Nakamura in a championship contenders match, Brand Split LOL. Riddle and Nakamura have seemingly teamed together because their other boyfriends are injured, and one here in the lamest of lame DQ finishes. Our second in two matches, this show is terrible. The match was actually really decent though, and Riddle's hot tag was ace. The problem is, is that this is the 10th time I've seen Riddle wrestle the Usos since March 28th. For those of you who are good at maths, that was nine weeks ago. I have seen them wrestle 10 matches in nine weeks. And in all of this, Riddle hit a super RKO and stood tall. So why didn't you just have them win to set up the title match rather than doing a lame DQ finish? Oh, because you don't want to pin your champions? But I thought wins and losses don't matter. See kids foreshadowing. But yeah, as I said, that was the main event of this week's Raw. What did you make of it? Let me know in the co- Sorry, what? Another out? There's another hour of this show to go- I don't believe you. There's another hour left! What the hell are they going to fill the hour with? And that's a question that WWE didn't have an answer to, as they stretched 15 minutes of actual content over 60. In the final hour of this show, Liv Morgan beat Rhea Ripley in a 10 minute match, and Bobby Lashley and Amos had every contract signing segment you've ever seen. The rest of the time was given to recap packages and a promo for the army. Three hours of Raw really highlights just how lacking this show is in star power when most of your top stars are part timers, made worse when one of those part timers has both of your world titles. This was a perfectly fine two hour episode of Raw that was sadly three hours long. Boy howdy did that last hour drag. This episode of Raw is three out of five. CM Punk is your new AEW World Champion, MJF was buried in his match with Wardlow and plenty of debuts in AEW too. Here's my review of AEW Double or Nothing in about 10 minutes. Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. So let's get this out the way to start with. AEW pay-per-views are too long. I don't care how great the wrestling is, over 